Evidence for and against the mass flow hypothesis. So for, so there's pressure within sieve tubes, and this is shown by if you pierce the flowing, then sap is released when you cut it. The concentration of sucrose is higher in the leaves or the source than in the roots or the sink. Downward flow in the phloem occurs in the light, but it stops at night. Increases in sucrose in the leaf are followed by increases in sucrose in the phloem shortly after. If a ring of bark with the phloem, but not the xylem, is removed from a woody stem, a bulge forms above the ring. And the fluid from the bulge has a higher concentration of sugars than the fluid from below the ring. And because the sugars can't, and this is because the sugars can't move past the area where the bark has been removed, which is evidence that there can be downward flow of sugars. I've said this before, but the pressure in the phloem can be investigated using aphids, and they pierce the phloem, and then the sap flows out quicker nearer the leaves then further down, which is evidence as a pressure gradient. Also, a radioactive tracer, such as carbon-14, can be used to trace the movement of organic substances in a plant. Metabolic poisons and or lack of oxygen stop the translocation of sucrose. Companion cells have many mitochondria and readily produce ATP. But then there is some evidence against. So one thing is the function of the sieve plates is unclear and they actually appear to hinder mass flow. I mean, it has been suggested that they may have a structural function which helps prevent the tubes from bursting. Another reason against is not all solutes move, move at the same speed and if it was mass flow, they should do. And sucrose is delivered at the same rate to all parts rather than going quicker to those with lower concentrations, which the mass flow theory suggests. So here's a summary of the evidence supporting the mass flow theory. So there is pressure within sieve tubes shown by the sap being released when the flow is cut. The concentration of sucrose is higher in the source than in the sink. The downward flow of uh, in the phloem occurs in the light but stops at night. Increases in sucrose in the leaf are followed by increases in sucrose in the phloem shortly after. Metabolic poisons or lack of oxygen stop the translocation of sucrose. And companion cells have many mitochondria and readily produce ATP. And then evidence against um, sieve plates appear to hinder mass flow. Not all solutes move at the same speed, which they should do if it's by mass flow. And sucrose is delivered at the same rate to all parts, rather than going quicker to those with lower concentrations. So that's the evidence for and against the mass flow theory.